Welcome to our special series, Life Goals Masterclass. This is the first session and I'm your host, Pallavi. In today's webinar, we will talk about how the pandemic has changed your retirement planning. I'm happy to be joined by three of the best names in the industry. My first panelist is Mr. Tarun Shug, MD and CEO, Bajaj Alliance Life Insurance. A seasoned industry veteran, Tarun brings with him over 25 years of experience in the financial services industry and has spent over 14 years in leadership roles within the Indian life insurance sector. Tarun is known for his strategic orientation, which has enabled him to build strong businesses throughout his career. He believes in investing towards building long-term relationships across stakeholder groups. My second panelist is Ms. Arpita Vinay, co-head Centrum Wealth Limited. With more than 15 years of experience in financial services across wealth management and private banking, Arpita has been part of the core team that has set up Centrum Wealth Management. As a whole time director on the company's board, she has helped to steer the firm from the venture to growth stage in the very competitive wealth management space. I'm also being joined by Mr. Sushant Bhansali, CEO Ambit Asset Management. Sushant has over 19 years of experience, 12 of which he has spent with Ambit, working in different senior capacities. Before joining Ambit, he worked with global firms such as MSCI Inc. and PricewaterhouseCoopers for close to six years. Sushant is a chartered accountant and also holds a postgraduate diploma in business management from Indian School of Business, Hyderabad. I welcome all of you on the panel. So let me start with you, Tarun. Tell us what are the key ingredients to plan for a rich retirement goal? Yeah, thank you, first of all, to give me this opportunity. Uh, see, retirement is a long haul game. It uh, is something that Indians today lack a retirement kitty. And uh, unlike the rest of Europe or even in the US where there is you know, money kept aside in Europe by the governments and US it's more uh, defined contributions where people themselves contribute. Uh, there is enough available for their retirement. But in India, this is uh, a big gap. It's an issue. We have a PF, but that's never enough. Uh, hence, you've got to plan and you've got to plan early. You've got to be clear as you plan what are the life to, lifetime goals that you will have because, I mean, ideally you should start planning as soon as you have a job. I know it sounds a little too early, but at least having a long-term plan on how you intend to you know, spend bulk of your money and which will uh, you know, help you figure out simple laws of compounding and the benefit you get. So you save lesser monthly if you are 25 year old, then when you, if you suddenly start picking up for saving for your retirement at 45, you, you'll of course have to pay a lot more. The other big thing is, uh, so retiring, uh, so basically planning early, planning first of all, usually in the planning cycle, you do require advice. And I am a, a big proponent of taking advice and maybe even paying for it. Uh, usually Indians don't like to pay, pay for advice, but usually Indians don't uh, are not competent. We've seen enough. Most of us are not to do their own financial plan. Hence, take the advice. Mm -hmm. that, that's the other bit I would say. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, another than just planning early, get your asset allocation also working a little smoothly and quickly. Uh, maybe a thumb rule I'll give you, which we use. I'm, I'm sure everybody has a different uh, perspective. We use 100 minus your age as the amount of equity you should have in your portfolio. Uh, particularly, you have to plan if you have to plan for long term and plan for your uh, uh, retirement. Uh, hence, if you're 60 year old, 100 minus 60, 40 percent should at least be an equity. Some people could have more, some people could have, le could have less, but ballparkish around that. So these are some of my first. Uh, top of mind inputs. Let me now go to Sushant. Has the pandemic heightened the need for retirement planning? There has been a sudden realization. What do you think about it? Yeah, so definitely, I think um, in the initial phase of pandemic, when all of us were sitting at home and mm -hmm. applying our mind what to do and what not to do, uh, things about retirement planning, insurance were quite uh, high on everybody's mind. But I think as times progress, as people started coming out, if you ask uh, someone now as compared to probably in April, May, I think mm -hmm. uh, the fear is out. And so has probably 
the prospects of planning and all those things have gone mm-hmm. at a probably lower uh, i think uh, rate uh, as compared to what uh, the high uh, mind uh, it was on top of your mind right so uh, that's a life cycle that uh, when you are in distress you think more about all those things but as you become comfort as your uh, fear goes back you uh, go back on those things and live a normal life and i think that's what probably uh, many of us have experienced while speaking to our clients as well right yeah. so uh, but i think uh, uh, more importantly uh, it de- definitely has left a dent in everybody's mind that there is a need for running mm-hmm. uh both for retirement as well as insurance i would say and probably more than retirement planning i think insurance has touched more on everybody's uh, mind and heart than about uh, and it's not just uh, probably uh, life insurance it's more about medical insurance as well right mm-hmm. at what could have been a big dent on your pocket and probably uh, everybody getting out of business as well around the same time right so both i think uh, the pandemic definitely has led people to think more about these things uh, than yeah. otherwise in your from a busy schedule both because you got time as well as the fear psychosis going around that time so arpita uh, talking about the various changes that we saw witnessed in the year that has gone by according to you how changes or things which were very dominant like salary cuts job losses and reduced earnings not just for salaried professionals but also for the business fraternity how has that impacted the the concept or this whole process of retirement planning so uh, i i think thanks pallavi i think before i come to how it's impacted uh, you know the people like us uh, you know the the watchers of 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 this session today relatively affluent relatively informed uh, english speaking but before that i think i just want to take a step back and add one or two dimensions to this whole concept of retirement planning uh mm-hmm. it's hit everyone hard and i think it's you know if you were to just look at the epf numbers from 25th march mm-hmm. to about 31st of september over a period of 6 months when the pandemic impact was maximum about 39 lakh people withdrew about 44000 crores of money from their what was supposed to be the retirement corpus so it's hit people but i think it's been uh, it's been divided in if you were to really look at it there are corporates and households with strong balance sheets who have had salary cuts and who have had uh, perhaps job losses and so on and so forth uh, but the weaker one which doesn't sort of hit the uh, uh, newspaper headlines a lot uh, that hits it a lot less which is corporates which are smes with smaller uh, with relatively um, uh, you know uh, more fragile balance sheets and households with more i'm not even talking about unorganized because there is no concept of they live from day to day but the mid to low income households and these uh, sme part of the corporates they have been impacted really very very hard so i think it's a uh, you know so most definitely there has been an impact on on retirement planning i just think that uh, uh, it's impacted people like us it's been it's impacted people uh, or households and firms with less with with more fragile balance sheets a lot more sharply and uh, and that's you know the globally uh, developed economies countries have been able to put money in the hands of the consumers mm-hmm. india with its resource constraint hasn't it's also about uh, health mm. so and 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 sort of tarun tarun i guess will agree with that staggering numbers are right 86% of rural 81% of urban no insurance cover and one interesting trend Uh, has been that health insurance growth has been faster than anything else this year mm-hmm. and more so on individual usually it will it would be the corporates that would do the the umbrella policies but this year the individual growth has been highest perhaps because of the uh, anxiety about whether you'll retain your jobs or not and coming to your specific question on retirement planning and how is it impacted people like us mm-hmm. i think at the very core of it you know uh, retirement planning is different from any other financial goal so if you want to sort of plan for a house you want to plan for for an education corpus you want to plan for an asset build out your options are two you can take a loan or you can save for it the retirement yeah. is very different in the sense you can't take a loan for retirement and therefore the point uh, tarun mentioned you really need to start early and you really need to put away some money because beyond your income earning years when you really need it uh, there is no loan that will come in and, and sort of help you out but the investor behavior is quite the opposite and which is what the number of epf told you 
that in times of panic, the first thing to get deprioritized is long-term goals. It's things mm-hmm. like retirement. So that's, you know, uh, from a financial planning context, it makes it so much more harder because it is so many years away. Uh, it's something that you can afford to deprioritize without realizing that savings is about the only way to sort of uh, get you there. Um, yeah, so that was my initial sort of comment on, uh, you know, how retirement planning is getting impacted in, in these times. My next question is for Tarun. Um, since we're talking about this sudden realization and the significance of protective investments, uh, not just life, but you know, health as well, what are your views on that? So uh, I think all the panelists are saying the right things uh, relevant for every individual. Uh, so there are various pots mm. of risks that are there for you. And you need to plan for each of these mm. risks. Uh, health has come out as very uncovered risk. There is a risk of living long, which is a retirement bit. Then there's a risk of possibly maybe dying early and hence not getting your family uh, cupboards uh, getting in place. So that there's a risk of mortality. And uh, long-term wealth creation, uh, generally uh, the, the Indian life insurance and particularly customers too would rather save some money uh, for goals which are five, seven, 10 years. So all these come into being. Particularly when you talk about the pension goal, the, there are two elements to it. One is the accumulation phase and one is the deaccumulation phase. Hmm. So the accumulation phase is basically when you start putting money aside and hmm. start saving it on a systematic basis over a period of time in a disciplined manner. And I think uh, Arpita correctly said that uh, in these times, people would rather take care of the, the day-to-day issues today than bother about the future. Hmm. And hence it tends to be you know, kind of ignored which is a problem mm. actually. Uh, so mm. would you want to have that pizza every month or would you want to save? It's something it sometime at an early age, it's, it's as simple as that, you know? So those relative calls that you'll end up taking, or would you would you spend something on an extra piece of clothing where you maybe don't require it in COVID nowadays working from home or would you rather save? So those kind of decisions come in the accumulation phase and the deaccumulation phase is when you uh, tend to annotize it and uh, cover your risk of living longer. Now today, somebody may actually be maybe working for 30 years, 35 years, and uh, earning for 30, 35 years. At the same time, if you were retiring at 58, 60, and there are a lot of my friends who want to retire at 50, 55 and earlier, with the average uh, bucket of longevity at at somebody who's alive at 60, uh, for Indian males is around 82, 83. So you're talking of 22 years, you know, 82 minus 20, 60, 22 years where you're not going to be earning. I mean, I'm just talking about the average. Somebody in good health, they actually live without any earnings for a very long time. Now, these things are, are not talked about normally. And hence, we find that the risk of living longer is, is not really covered. So that is one aspect which particularly needs to be covered well. Talking about the different types of risk, Reinvestment risk and longevity risk. These are the two big challenges for people who are planning for retirement. How can these be mitigated? No risk can be fully mitigated, right? Hmm. If at all, uh, you can plan for things and uh, hope hmm. uh, uh, it, didn't, it doesn't hit you back, right? From a reinvestment perspective, I would say that uh, uh, probably you can uh, continue to... Uh, stay invested all the time mm-hmm. and as and when the money comes back right uh, have your asset allocation i think the most important thing uh, people uh, should be bothered about is asset allocation right and mm-hmm. uh, i've seen many retirees uh, getting their retirement funds right and uh, end up investing in high beta stocks right just basis some bad advice they get right uh, whether it's into high, highly volatile mutual funds or direct stocks, PMSs, right? Mm. Uh, those are crucial years, uh, early years of your retirement, right? When you've got the money and uh, at, mm. at that time, if you uh, invest into something which loses your capital in a short period of time, mm-hmm. right? If you are a mm. young person, I think even if you have lost capital for some time uh, and you stay put, then probably things will come back. But as you are growing old, your risk-taking capability and capacity just goes down massively. 
so you become more i think short term than long term you don't have a luxury of waiting for 3 to 5 years You're, because mm. one you are not busy in your daily schedule like a young person is right so you have too much time mm. to think about and if you think too much mm. about things then you end up taking wrong decisions at times right right Hmm. so i think uh, uh, from a reinvestment perspective uh, asset allocation i think is the most important thing one should be worried about and that's where i think whether young or old everybody misses uh, and which i think creates the whole difference uh, from a long term perspective if you have invested highly on debt in your initial years right even if you have uh, saved a lot it doesn't help you uh, a lot while if you invested even smaller in equities probably which is probably in long term the best asset class if you have done it the right way then it can create a big difference in your retirement corpus in 20 30 years so arpita adding to what sushant mentioned here redemptions and people withdrawing their uh, pension fund you also mentioned that uh, can emotional decision making be handled in a better manner especially in a scenario like this where people are more concerned about their immediate and their short term needs so uh, i think the first is i very easily is talked about the, the most everywhere but we live we live in a hyper uh, connected uh, you know overloaded with information 24/7 sort of a uh, world and what it does is it forces you to um, act you know there is a significant bias for action which is actually mm. extremely um, uh, you know um, Uh, detrimental to your financial portfolio so that's the first one from a bias from an emotional decision making point of view you've got to uh, you know and, and therefore it comes back to the very very cliched and i i really don't like using that word but i don't know if anything else comes to it which is the fear and the greed so there is a whole and and see for yourself what happened in the earlier part of what happened in march april and and the way it's mm-hmm. been and i'm not getting into the fifth session today on what's happening in markets but uh, there is a set which is you have got you've got to act because there's so much happening happening around you and one part mm-hmm. of it is you you know you, the, the missing out you the fear of missing out so jump into the markets you've sort of uh, held yourself steady for a bit and the other one is where you're completely paralyzed because of fear and that's when the unrealized becomes a realized loss and that's a vicious circle and you know once that's got reinforced then you sort of uh, you know it you find it very difficult to get back into growth asset assets so i think coming you know uh, therefore how do you really you know the question initially on how do you really how does one look at uh, retirement planning in these times it eventually comes down to the only two variables at play here uh, there is your savings and there is what your savings can generate so from a savings point of view uh, uh, the first thing that's happened a lot in retire in 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 covid times is you obviously have cut down your uh, discretionary spends karun alluded to that mm-hmm. essentials you can uh you've looked at uh, creating a emergency corpus uh you know because you know consider think about this a lot of a lot of households ha- don't have uh a, you know a 3 to 6 month expenses being planned for and imagine planning for a 30 year life uh, and and planning for expenses around that so the first controllable in your hand is obviously to, to look at increasing your savings cutting down your expenses cut paying out your debt creating an emergency sort of a corpus hmm. and so on and so forth and the second one is how do you make that savings grow faster that's a function of the time that that you have and therefore again cliched but i have perhaps the biggest uh, uh, you know magic in financial market start early it compounds and and the how do you you know um, create a portfolio so you know again asset allocation is something that is considered is viewed with a lot of cynicism but in whatever manner there are two kind of uh, uh, buckets if you will uh, which are uh, mm-hmm. income generating assets and the other are growth oriented assets and both have become a lot more difficult in this in in post pandemic because the world any which way is was stacked against savers globally you know the rates you know there are countries where you know to put a deposit you had to pay the bank we thankfully we didn't have in that in india india had at, le- at least positive real rates you know so savers and pensioners were any which way is the life was stacked against them in india now even the real rates are negative so if you see your fd at 5% but actually you're not you're destroying uh, so there is a income generating asset which has become uh, which is becoming dif- more difficult and it is stacked against the save- savers and pensioners and what's happening on the growth assets it's become a lot more volatile than you can handle 
had we've had so many investors who think there is a risk profile of is of a certain kind but when you actually go through a, a turbulence that you did in that period you really understand what's your actual risk profile like so you have to deal with negative real rates on one end and you have to deal with volatility at both ends therefore it's complex uh, it's difficult but um, the only thing controllable in your hand is maximizing the saving increasing the time that there can be and having a sensible mix of income generating and uh, growth assets in your portfolio so tarun we're talking about different phases of uh, you know wealth accumulation and wealth uh, distribution for those who are approaching retirement a fixed regular income as a replacement of salary is of utmost importance in this how can insurance play a role yeah so see it is uh, particularly become relevant in the case of a crisis and again mm-hmm. let me also use a cliche uh, we get to know your friends only at the time of crisis right who's really coming forward and helping you and i think that's exactly what has happened during the covid time that life insurance sales as sushant also alluded to has gone up because of that mm-hmm. similarly at the time of pensions uh, insurance is uh, possibly the only true product in the entire <coughs> landscape of financial services mm-hmm. which back to back hedges your risk of living longer you know you can have when I mean, they can people do say that you can actually maybe have a property which you can rent out and you will never be sure you know that's exactly going to be yielding you the what you want every time there's like a reinvestment risk there there's a risk of the the uh, rentals you're getting to get uh, lesser over a period of time so just to talk about specific products i alluded to it earlier mm-hmm. but largely there is an accumulation phase which is when you are saving when mm-hmm. discipline saving is required a key yeah. factor of this is uh, already a lot uh, has been talked about but a key factor is mm-hmm. like a roller coaster you can't jump off in the middle and that's what a life insurance uh, you know uh, product a pension product makes you do it. it it kind of makes you saved in a disciplined fashion because if you get off the roller coaster you actually don't really you actually you might land up losing money hence this this mm-hmm. clear discipline of uh, investing during the accumulation phase and saving uh, is a very critical part now there are various mm-hmm. products that come in you could do it uh, through ulips you could do it through endowment plans you could do it through do it through regular pension plans you also have the nps uh, there is a pf so that's a entire slew of products that are there but i'm talking only of the li- long term products there are a lot of short term liquidity based products which are there fds and mutual funds and saving uh, accounts but that is not that's a different genre altogether i'm talking of something which will be there with you for more than 5 years and maybe 10 to 20 years mm-hmm. so that is uh, the entire spectrum uh, if i might and i'm sure uh, my learned friends will have more ideas as well there within which you would you know kind of decide if you want to do flexible asset allocation you would mm-hmm. possibly choose a ulip or a pension plan but if you would want a fixed income a uh, base product or rather a fixed guaranteed income then you there are lots of other kind of plans just to use some jargon non par and par kind of plans that are there in uh, life insurance mm-hmm. this is usually used in the accumulation phase and accumulation meaning suppose you start at 25 30 40 whatever your age is till let's say 58 or 60 once this pot of gold is kind of kept for you at the end of your you know the, the time you get off your earning life uh then you have two aspects to it one is simple commutation and commutation meaning suppose i have a crore uh in most life insurance pension products and nps you're allowed to commute 60% of that without any tax so in this case 60% of a crore 60 lakhs you can actually take as in one go not really advise to do that normally uh, when you take away 60 lakhs means just 40 lakhs is now available for your income uh, yeah. in in a longer term uh, paradigm yeah. uh, but this is available when I mean, you can this flexibility is built in pension plans so at the time of retirement all this money is made available now you can use this money in various ways in the case of pension you can commute or you can take any proportion starting 40 to 100% of it and buy an annuity plan 
the annuity plan is the only plan which is basically cover, covering your entire life risk. And there are different various mm -hmm. kinds of annuity plans. The annuity plans that cover just you yourself, the annuity plans that cover you and your spouse, uh, the annuity plans that cover you and your spouse uh, till both are alive, that is. Uh, they're, they're the third plan, the kinds of categories of plans are which cover you and then provide you the money back to your family, again, tax-free. So they, suppose you put a crore, that crore will be you know, giving you an income till you're alive and you cover your entire risk. So you could be alive till 90, your spouse and you put together, or maybe 105. And we know about Pada Singh who actually ran the marathon at 104, right? So, so you can, you can do all of that, right? And then the entire one crore can actually be made available to whoever your heir is, whoever your uh, nominee is. So these are these various aspects around the accumulation and the deaccumulation phases of uh, retirement. So uh, Sushant, in a scenario where deposit rates are drastically falling almost below 5.5% and even uh, government-backed social security schemes like the PPF, they're offering a mere 7.1% interest. How can one make good use of annuity plans? What do you have to say on this? Yeah, no, definitely. I think falling interest rates are a cause of concern for everyone, including insurance companies, if I may say. Mm -hmm. right? uh, especially general insurance companies, life insurance companies still they have very long dated assets and liabilities. But for general insurance company, mm -hmm. it has been a big concern. Uh, from a, a, a consumer perspective, I think, uh, and these rates are here to stay, lower interest rates, right? Uh, we are not expecting mm -hmm. high-digit uh, inflation also. So lower interest rates will mm -hmm. continue to stay for a long time, right? Probably those uh, rates of 8-10%, which we have seen while we are growing, I think are probably history. And we'll move more towards uh, the developed uh, world, right? Where we mm -hmm. have uh, middle uh, single-digit interest rates for a long time, uh, ranging between mm -hmm. I would say 3 to 7%, right? Uh, so definitely a uh, fixed income product is not going to help you from your retirement perspective only, right? Mm -hmm. While it gives you liquidity and safety of capital, but uh, it aren't helping you and building uh, and helping you with the power of compounding. So equity, mm -hmm. I would say is one uh, which can probably uh, help. So allocation to equities will increase definitely. And uh, uh, so far, I think we had a, a problem of a very few companies in this company, in this country being listed, very few good companies, right? And mm -hmm. equity, if you don't invest in good high quality companies uh, or long term, it doesn't help. Right? In short term, mm -hmm. probably you can time things and make money in equities. But over a long period of time, if you are not invested in good businesses, you can't make money in equities, which is uh, offering you good uh, capital protection mm -hmm. as well as a, a great uh, return uh, profile. Right. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, we have more and more uh, uh, companies getting listed and we expect uh, many uh, more listings in next uh, five to 10 years in this country. I think people have realized the value of market cap as compared to just cash flows, which historically has been mm -hmm. the trend. If you look at uh, all the great uh, brands of this country, which didn't get listed because of some regulatory reasons, they continue to be unlisted and enjoy their cash flows because they don't want to get listed and uh, have uh, uh, people decide for them what to do and what not to do. But that culture is changing. Mm -hmm. uh, also, another important point is that when we grew up and or probably while uh, our parents were uh, earning, uh, that time savings were something which one needs to, one need, uh, one used to decide and then expend uh, accordingly. So income minus saving was the expense mantra while uh, in the new generation, income minus expense is the savings, mm -hmm. right? right. So that was, I think, the situation till COVID hit us. Uh, mm -hmm. Probably because during the COVID times, people realized that income minus reduced expenses has become higher savings, right? But that will change again once uh, everything starts moving in the normal direction. And we are seeing people are going to restaurants, hotels, spending on discretionary items. We are uh, looking at the mm -hmm. numbers of... Uh, Q3, I think consumer discretionary is just a uh, big bang uh, year on year growth, right? So uh, saving as a culture uh, was there in the older generation, but uh, expense is the new culture, like the Western world, right? Mm -hmm. People don't realize the, uh, uh, while people, I think, get, got a sense during the COVID period that savings are important too, right? 
but uh, uh, the memory human memory is very short cycled right so we are again mm-hmm. probably back into the expense mode and credit card let uh, uh, expenses so it's very important uh, to uh, i would say uh, save more and allocate more to higher return products like equities early on mm-hmm. because you have a risk taking capability also at uh, a young age mm-hmm. compared to an older age and uh, investing in equities probably is the answer to falling interest rates i would say so arpita we're talking about the change in the consumer behavior and also uh, sushant mentioned that this might you know go back to uh, the, when things were normal but uh, do you think this will change and also on a separate note do you think uh, some individuals may have to work a little longer than they had earlier planned in order to reach their uh, retirement goals so one on your specific question that post pandemic uh, will uh, and we are we are in midst of this india seems a lot better place than other countries will it come back to the same equation i'm not very sure about that because this uh, perhaps uh, will lead to some deep behavioral changes after you the human psyche is such that after you've lived through something like this and depending on how well prepared uh, that you were there were there been generations uh, you know the post hyper inflation the, the baby boomers that they are called people who were impacted post the case dep- uh, great depression it impacts your psyche and behavior in coming years to come Uh, i think covid is going to be one of one of them you forever going to be a little more cautious a little more uh, anxious about uh, you know both financial and and, and uh, overall wellness so i i think it will normalize but i don't think it will come back to in india any which ways the consumerism wasn't as exaggerated as it is uh, globally so that's uh, that's uh, sort of uh, one and the obvious will people have to work uh, longer i guess they will have to because one impact is one uh, one one part of the equation is savings but the other part of the equation is what does your investment portfolio do an investment mm-hmm. portfolio as i you know i think it's been discussed in detail here the uh, income generating part of the portfolio you will have to go to the bottom of the barrel to get the yield set you got free so post uh, you know on an inflation adjusted basis your your portfolio is not going to be um, able to generate the same kind of returns and on equities as i mentioned earlier the volatility is going to be so much higher uh, uh, it, it's been near abnormal and i could talk about that at length but you know so uh, on both ends i i think uh, come you know people will have to uh, work longer which may not necessarily be a bad uh, bad thing you know there was this one recent uh, research very interesting uh, that i was reading that about uh, 50 to 70% of us kids born in india we don't have too much of data around that are expected to live to 106 years so uh, the 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 point that tarun made outliving your uh, you know finances or outliving or living long is is going to be a reality so living long and and retirement age was 60 when your expectancy was 60 so i uh, i think you'll have to work longer i don't know if that's a very bad thing you know uh, as long as your uh, you know you have a purpose which sort of takes care of your uh, basic requirements sure sure in fact uh, talking about the various changes and the shifts that uh, we've seen in the last uh, you know few months or a year uh, tarun i want to take your opinion that there's been a massive shift to digitalization not just the spending part but the investing part as well so mm-hmm. how have insurance providers you know adapted to this change yeah i think that's a very good question and this has been one marked change from customers for sure mm-hmm. uh as far as life insurers are concerned uh, digital digitalization was happening all the way through it was happening right, right. Uh, there was a lot of work that was going uh, in various directions within this uh, lately of course what has happened is uh, thanks to a uh, lot of acceleration of consumer behavior and i call it acceleration uh, whatever we were expecting will happen in 3 years now happened in almost 3 months uh, we've seen a huge uptake of uh, uh digital services uh for example mm-hmm. about 65% of our renewals come uh, digitally now hence the absolute i call this uh, pavlovian response from uh, uh, insurers that uh, we've just digitized uh in an accelerated fashion even further and not just mm-hmm. digitized uh, we've attempted to work on a, you know a 360 degrees uh, process including the way the regulator has helped us uh so today you can actually get your uh, policy 
uh, as an e policy earlier uh, if even if you opted for an e policy we had to mandatorily send you a physical policy today if you were to get a physical policy you would go and quarantine in first right so the e policy has become like a regular bit uh, there's a lot of stuff that's happened on digitization as a thumb rule usually life insurers are spending 70% of money of on technology at the back end and to just 30% in the upfront customer facing tools now this is kind of become balanced the back end still requires a lot of money but the front end has become a lot more active in terms of investment a lot of innovations have come a lot of things which uh, we never imagined i'll give you an example of our own bit that we've done uh, we figured out that our advisors are finding it very tough to meet customers because nobody wanted to you know get you face to face and usually you had to fill a form uh, mm-hmm. so we use a tablet for insurance uh, going into the pandemic about 97% of our policies were anyways getting sold via a tablet uh, like an ipad or a android tablet uh, but what we then did was we made this in a uh, we made it a screen share screen sharing tablet the same application became a screen sharing a secure uh, way mm-hmm. so you could mm-hmm. actually land up uh, buying a product from me not by touching anything that i'm going to be showing you because suddenly touching became an issue right uh, how does the virus spread that was a big issue so mm-hmm. uh, you could be sitting 5 meters away 500 meters away 5 kilometers 500 kilometers and i can actually save share my your application form with you and you can actually see what's going to happen you can do a voice call with me there and then you could actually uh, initiate this entire process which is entirely secure on form filling on on getting all the brochures on a one click basis there and then and mm-hmm. uh, a lot of these things have come through and uh, like i said digitization was already there but a lot more money being spent on innovation lot more money being spent on data so uh you know probably if you were to come to us we would possibly know a lot more about you as soon as you buy a policy data mm-hmm. is available quite easily with life insurers and hence okay. with digital there's a layer of you know profiling and data that is now possible and hence mm-hmm. being able to put the right product at the right time at the right place with the right channel uh mm-hmm. to the customer so lots of stuff has already happened in this Uh, in fact sushant your take on this uh, shift and uh, the, this whole talk about video kycs and e policies how do you look at it well, i think definitely digitization is something which is future and hmm. uh, somebody who is not able to offer uh, digital uh, uh, inputs and outputs i think will become just history right mm-hmm. and, uh, even in our industry uh, which i think was probably took around 3 uh, to 6 days to open an account now we can mm-hmm. open within the same day uh, we are sending pre filled forms just by taking five six information from our clients and right. clients just have to probably just uh, sign uh, one single uh, place now as a power of attorney mm-hmm. that thing is now pending to be digitized everything else i think is now digitized for us and that will be mm-hmm. trend uh, i think nobody it's not just about convenience i think it's mm-hmm. also about uh, having your record records in order Uh, it's about uh, swift right, right. Uh, no time wasting right no need mm-hmm. to worry about uh, yeah, that it will take 7 days to 15 days to activate account right everybody mm-hmm. want everything uh, to be done now and not later right so digitization mm-hmm. is something mm-hmm. people have to uh, invest uh, from a manufacturer side if i may say and mm-hmm. consumers are uh, i think uh, because of covid everybody has adapted to digital form absolutely right mm-hmm. everything is virtual now right yeah so uh, arpita your opinion on this i mean uh, we're talking about how uh, consumers have shifted to digitalization and this of course in hindsight if you look at it it's, it's always been something that you know companies and consumers they wanted they wanted how can they save time uh, on uh, you know you know planning an investment today buying an insurance policy is much more easier because of the online platforms and of course you know if i want to start an sip today i can you know even do it on my mobile phone so how do you look at this change and will this also help or push people to you know plan uh, their uh, you know overall investments in a better manner because this is of course saving a lot of time and especially in the current scenario where people really want to you know do things quickly right 
<clears throat> I think a lot has been said by Tarun and Sushant, uh, but uh, you know, what's really happened is about uh, a 10 years of digitization journey that would have been there, adoption of technology has got compressed in about six, nine months to a year. Mm-hmm. Some of the things that were unthinkable, uh, you know, um, has it's been it's been sort of seamless adoption. So I think from a mega trend point of view, that's happened, and I think that behavior is likely to continue. Uh, you know, and in in that sense, perhaps it, it's been a human tragedy. But if there was one boon uh, of this, mm-hmm. has been the very very significant and democratization across the board and adoption of technology. Uh, from a client's point of view, there are two things uh, that you want to do. Uh, one is um, you know, focus on efficiencies. Therefore, they were they were uh, you know across the board, and we weren't uh, an exception where digital technology uh, CIO sort of a function was 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 not se- center square. It was a uh, it was there, but it wasn't. It was um, I don't know if I can use the word peripheral, but I can say it wasn't it wasn't right in the middle of things. I think that's changed across the organizations. So right. making life a lot more efficient, which means that reducing your turnaround times, making things paperless getting to execute transactions before the clients ever needing to visit your offices and so on and so forth. That's one thing that's been worked upon very, very significantly. But the surprise has been on the engagement part. Now, you know, so, um, you know, um, we never thought, and it was uh, that, you know, you could actually have a meaningful client conversations, including new client conversations on an impersonal mm-hmm. medium. And that's been, that's been a huge surprise. The existing clients, reviews, and talking to them about what's happening, that was an easy adoption. But even a lot of uh, newer clients, new people, um, you know, people who have you have never met in person, uh, rapport building or an in-person medium has been fantastic. So I think both engagement and from an efficiency point of view, it's been it, hmm, hmm. perhaps it's been one of the only positive upsides of uh, tragedy that uh, COVID has been. Right, right. So that brings us to the the close of the session. But before we let you go, um, just quick, uh, you know, piece of advice from all of you. First, I'll come to Tarun. Uh, what's your piece of advice to avoid glitches in long-term planning despite a crisis like this one? I think uh, it's a whole nine yards, which is without that, you can't really, uh, in fact, you shouldn't really even think that you can do something there. Mm-hmm. So starting with a financial plan, getting advice mm-hmm. with your financial plan, being disciplined. And like I said, mm-hmm. not you're getting onto a roller coaster, be clear. Mm-hmm. Don't just jump off in the middle of it. You have to be there. Mm -hmm. Uh, Getting an emergency fund, I think that was talked about. That was a very good point. Where, Mm -hmm. I mean, a thumb rule usually is that at least get six months of income lying aside Mm -hmm. as your emergency fund. Uh, Mm -hmm. Get yourself covered early. And uh, of course, uh, from a life insurance perspective, two key products. One is uh, a term plan. Try to get that as early as possible, usually even before, you know, you have a family, sometimes even before you're married, because you can change your nominee, right? Your parents, and then later on, you can move it to your to your spouse. Uh, and whoever it be, it could be, a, it could be both the male and female of the family. So both of them should actually do this. And uh, uh, the, the retirement planning, of course, uh, ensuring that you are generating enough over the long term to get your pot of gold. Uh, and you're doing asset planning there and being able to annotize to save for your income, which uh, during the unearning years of your life. So mm-hmm. That's pretty much all of it. And in life insurance, you cannot go without a complete plan. So mm-hmm. I may have uh, stolen the thunder from the other panelists, but yeah, that's how it is. You just have to go the whole hog. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense. Sure, sure. So we'll take a quick uh, word of advice from the other panelists. Uh, Sushant? Your piece of advice? Yeah, so I think uh, uh, as uh, Tarun rightly said, uh, start planning early and start executing early as well. So it's not just Mm -hmm. about planning, but executing as well. And stay put. Mm -hmm. Uh, During the pandemic, I think uh, people might have uh, swayed away a bit and uh, not executed things or changed their uh, plans. Right. I think uh, the most important thing is to plan something and then stuck to it. Right. If you don't uh, stick to your plans, no plan can mm-hmm. deliver. Uh, so it has to be mm-hmm. planning, execution, and then staying put. All three put together. One of them fails, probably uh, uh, the other two will not work at all. Right, right. Arpita? So apart from what's already been said, obviously um, get a, a good solid insurance cover that's been talked about mm-hmm. because that's uh, living life comes with that. 
um, obviously have an emergency fund in place so that you don't have to dip into it at the at the worst time. I think also it's important to get your house in order. In India, the concept of wills and all that is a very difficult sort of conversation. So get your nominations in place, get your will in uh, you mm -hmm. know wills in place. Have a play have one consolidated place where you have all this information available and share it with your uh, you know uh, uh, sort of members. So a few important things to get your house in order. And when it, and coming to the financial plan, while there is no one cookie cutter solution, uh, understand your risk profile. Obviously, the uh, the the tenets of start mm. early, uh, on and have sensible expectation from your fixed income part of the portfolio. It's not going to give the returns, headline returns that you had expected in the past, and therefore you need to have some growth or equity assets there. And even equity, uh, a sensible mix of passive and active. So one thing that didn't get talked about a lot, but I, I think that's something that's crept up on us is, you know, the way NPS has grown. So NPS is already about a five lakh crore. For salaried employees, you get a 10% basic benefit. Uh, it's amongst the most low cost options. So look at in equity, you mm -hmm. can, uh, you, know, you know, Sushant spoke about that. They're very smart, active managers who handle cycles. Look at that. Look at passive as well. Low cost, you know, options like an NPS or passive funds or ETFs. On a fixed income side, you've got to be sensible about your expectations because anything which is much higher than the prevalent, uh, you know, uh, the um, government yields and so on and so forth is bound to come with some risk. Understand that before you invest. Sure, sure. Thanks a lot, all of you, uh, to be part of the panel. And it was indeed an insightful session. We'll be back with some more sessions in this live course masterclass. Thanks for uh, being here. Thanks for watching. Thank, Thank you, everyone.